Hello my soccer universe. I have been using my press again and you can already see the two shirts that I've been working on in the background and I've tried to document this process as well as possible. First off, all the patches that you see on here I have acquired directly from probably the best, not the cheapest source, which is of course Football Authentica in Great Britain. I ordered the patches and this time they arrived rather quickly. Second, my press is not in principle large enough to handle an entire name set. So what makes this video probably a little bit more special is how do I approach it when my printing area is a little bit smaller than what I need, I still can get the job done. And lastly, I have to add a few caveats. A, setting it up so that I can film and do the printing was rather challenging. I had to do it down in the kitchen and in order to have the press well set up, it made it difficult for me to actually place a microphone. So in the end, I just recorded it with the microphone of my cell phone where the sound quality is not the greatest. Also, the angle might be off at times because it's really, really hard to judge. With all that out of the way, please enjoy my little tutorial, if you like, on how to play namesets with a heat press that is actually not big enough. I have here the two shirts we have here. The France 21 away jersey where I got an Mbappé name set and I have two Nations League patches so I basically want to set it up like it was worn during the Nations League final where he of course scored the winner and then for my Milan jersey that I recently acquired I was looking for name sets in the end I decided on Benacer and then I decided let's make a Champions League jersey out of this one so I got the Fondazione Milan patch for the back side. I have here the Champions League patches and of course I have the Scudetto which was also missing. So these are all the things that I wanna apply. But before we go further into all that, things that I'm using in addition. I have here a measuring tape that I will need. I have also back here my trusty ruler, a triangle where I can put angles and all kinds of stuff. And then I'm also gonna use probably this tape that came with my press that allows me to tape this before application onto the shirt and then I remove it before I remove the cover here. So why would I need that? Because the press only covers an area of about this size here. Roughly 20 times 30 centimeters, a little bit more than 20. But as you can see, it goes only over a single digit. I might be able to fit it over the 10 from Mbappé as well because it is tight enough but I would not be able to apply this plus the name set. So and I have to give huge credit here to my buddy Idris from Amour du Maillot. He said you know you might as well take a board, set up everything on the shirt, then put it on a board that is a little bit larger and that will only allow you to move it around and fortunately the top of my press is a swivel top, which makes it really, really easy to readjust things. So this is a very a favorable thing in my case. I got these boards here. They're in A3 format, so it's almost 30 times 40. And as you can see, they will cover a name set in full. And it would also do for the same here for the Mbappé. I could buy it. I think I bought this for 8 euros. <laughs> they had five such thin sheets. I took two sheets and I covered it with a towel here. So in order to not get the shirt damaged, first I wanna place everything, figure that one out, apply the tape, then get it onto the board and lift it together with the board onto the press and then the regular stuff with taking papers over and so on and so forth. This is at least the plan and let's see how it will work out. Okay, let's start with the Milan shirt and let's try how we can place name and number before I had it just put roughly how I wanted to have it. I saw from pictures that the Fondazione Milan patch is in this area where we have the red stripes and I just put it right here on the edge, is roughly centralized and what is really nice is that the F and the E fit just outside these red stripes, so I have it. I place it nicely, nicely centered. That is definitely great help whenever you have a pattern. Let it help you line up everything. And 
as you can see it is roughly parallel to the seam line here as well now i want to line up these two then also kind of centered but you see they're not the same size so that's why i have all the measurements we also need a little bit more measurements because we need to place everything more or less in the center and we need to figure out the height. I'm sure there are kit regulations out there for Serie A, they're probably in Italian, so I won't be able to read them. However, to my rescue is that I have from exactly this season, I have already two miniatures that were printed and that really helped. And I've especially the match worn Giroux shirt that is professionally printed by the kit room. And so I did the measurements and it turns out from the top of the collar to the upper edge, it is around 11 centimeters. And then it is between the lower edge of the letters to the top edge of the numbers, it's around six centimeters. Very, very, very helpful. The other thing that I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna make very careful, very careful, some slight marks that I roughly see where the center is, where do we want to have it lined up. So I'm going to do some measurements. I'm going to use the tape measure to measure here. I will line up the center, make a mark here and do the same thing here, make marks here, place them then along the line here and from here up I will measure up. As you've seen, I spent a whole lot of time on measuring and so on because I just want to get it right. And it's so tricky because the material is kind of stretchy and everything about it. It's not super straightforward. It's the first time I'm doing this is the best I can do, but I feel rather confident. The way it looks, I'm actually quite happy. I'm happy that this Fondazione Milan is roughly in the middle, not exactly. Still can adjust it if I want to, but it was now most important for me to have name and number very well placed on this unfortunately very blank back. If those stripes would continue, I think the placement would be a whole lot easier. You also see I applied here the fixing tape. So when I take this shirt up now, nothing should fall off and I should it should easily transfer over to this board. I also already started the machine to heat up. So I'm gonna turn this around not to burn anything. And I'm gonna transfer this over now. Okay, I have it all on the board. The other thing I'm gonna do is, with the Puma shirt came this carton that I wanna slide here in between in order to avoid having the front and the back being merged together by mistake and I think I will first try to put the number on I'm not gonna press yet I just for alignment yes this looks good I'm still not quite heated up. So, alignment is correct. We still have to wait for the warm up. Now I'm taking my trusty papers. I'm 
once the machine is ready, we set for pressing. I've shown you the process before. I pull it at 160 degrees. I will press it for 15 seconds and then we'll see how it goes. So the number is printed. In order to get the name on now, I have ideally to just turn it around and place it here. nicely placed and I'm gonna do in a similar fashion the Fondazione Milan next And here we are. Now I'm gonna let it cool down and then I'll peel it off with you. The moment of truth. I'll start with the number because that is the one we pressed first. I first take off this tape. Or maybe it comes off here quite nicely. Ta-da! Number four, very nicely applied. Okay, and here's the final result. All very nicely applied. However, it was not quite as straightforward. I had to, when I took this one off, I realized that the B and the E were not coming off as easily, maybe because they were not pressed perfectly. So I had to repress this side again and I did then another pass over to this because I also saw uh, that here in the middle it was not coming off easily, but I had already let it cool down, which was another problem. When you saw me take off the four, it was not quite cooled down yet. It worked. However, I had some unsightly wobbles there. So I pressed over this again. Now it is relatively smooth. The Fondazione Milan, I did really well, it came off easily. I may press it longer than the 15 seconds as well, just to be on the safe side, but this one uh, made no problem. The toughest one was the Benacer. Now, I also did the Champions League patches. I used pictures. I moved this logo just a tad higher above the Puma, because if I look at match pictures i mean it's basically bumping up right to the puma i think is a much more pleasant placement and of course to complete it also the scudetto is on there which looks really 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 nice i gotta say now the shirt is complete on to mbappe okay i'm not gonna go through the entire procedure with the mbappe shirt however i want to note a few things that i have figured out that make this maybe a little bit more challenging but also some solutions that i will use in the entire application process this is a plain shirt so it is really hard to find kind of the center you kind of have to hope that this here is the center there's also this intricate vapor knit pattern on there with a lot of dots where if you want it because those are all vertical lines you could potentially count the lines however i already see that at this point the pattern is not symmetric so forget about that fortunately there's one thing we have i can measure from this point to this point and if i do so i actually measure that this distance is pretty exactly 40 centimeters so the idea now is to take this line and line the center of the Mbappe up at exactly 20 centimeters so I will have to measure this here get the halfway point note where the 20 centimeter from here and here is and we have it set from the top I'm gonna use the same 
11 centimeter rule that we had for Serie A, I don't think it will be that much different. Now the other thing is, and this actually did surprise me, this double digit number, if I would have placed it, and maybe you've seen it before, I probably would have left a little bit of a gap. Not much, but just a tad of a gap. Just to have the spacing a little bit more pleasant. However, when I look at match pictures of this one, it is literally that the kit man just lined these two sides up with each other. So there's a very teeny tiny gap, almost too close for comfort within, for me. But it's a very teeny gap and that's exactly how I'm gonna put it. Added benefit is that if you line it up here, and yes the one is just a tad shorter than the zero, but if you line it up here, it more or less corresponds with the width of the Mbappé name set. So that makes it relatively easy to apply, I would say. So again, the steps, 20 centimeter half here, measure the distance here to find the halfway point. I kind of have already from the top the 11 centimeters. It is already like that. Then take this, a teeny bit further down, line the edges up with the edges of the name set, and then we should be ready to apply it. I'm also thinking now, we already said that this mat is kind of the press point, so if it's really like that, I can do again the number in one pressing, and then the name in a second pressing. Another hint that I realized that it's exactly like that, that you line them up with each other, Look at the front number, how the panels have actually these little edges to them. And it's exactly made for that, that you just line them up next to each other for the spacing. Now for the front number, the spacing between the one and the zero is of course a whole lot wider, but that's exactly how it was applied. <laughs> Since I've already shown you the result of the Milan shirt, I want to show you the final result of the Mbappé shirt as well. Let's start at the back. This took me a little bit less because I didn't have to worry about filming anymore. But the way I approached it, I actually could fit the whole thing over the number. I pressed the number and I actually made sure that I pressed once from the bottom, once from the top. You know, just to make sure. the. Mbappé name itself, there was one single press that I needed. For the peel off, I also realized, especially with these small letters here, you know, it gets stuck a little bit. If, if you cool it down, the film that I have over, I bent really, really tightly and then took it off. This was much better than using maybe a thumb on here and, you know, use a little bit of pressure. If I wound it tightly, it came off quite easy without any additional force. Again, I spent a whole lot of time trying to place name and number and then in the end I realized that maybe this one is just a tad too low. In the end, who cares? <laughs> it is my very first time that I'm doing this. I also have to say, the number here with the hexagons in there is just beautiful. I also applied the patches for the Nations League and of course the UEFA Foundation patch. And then on the front, this patch, I probably have it still too high when you watch the match pictures. This patch is probably even here, even a little bit lower. I just find the placement here a little bit better. And then this number here, I was just eyeballing. I wanted to have it roughly centered. I knew from judge judging from pictures, it's about the length, not quite, of this patch. Further down, it sits a little bit more on the belly. I got it on. Overall, I'm really pleased how this turned out. I wanted to have this shirt in Nations League configuration as France won it and Mbappé scored the winning goal. 
And I have also one last bonus content for you. I pressed one additional patch. Do you remember this jersey? Yeah, I showed you once in a video how I applied this patch here. I pressed this one again, but this is not what I added. When I ordered these two name sets, I also added this patch from the 11th match day where they actually, the first one where they have named the San Paulo Stadium in Estadio Diego Maradona. They played against Sampdoria, so you can see the stadium here. And I found this a much better patch to use than putting a Maradona number 10 on the back of this shirt. It is still blank. Which player should I use on this one? Let me know. I'm thinking Insigne, or should I leave it blank? So this ends my second foray into the printing adventure. Overall, it took a whole lot of time to do this. With all the filming, measuring, going back and forth, trying to figure out with pictures, I think I spent on the Benazir shirt a good 90, if not 120 minutes. The Mbappé shirt I got quicker done. Within an hour I had everything on. In the future I will probably not film unless I figure out something in addition, but I think it all covers it quite well, what I did in here. Take your time. As you see, I took an entire evening to do this. It was totally worth it. And one final thing, and I should have mentioned it when I had this shirt down, I had a little hiccup. This patch here had actually a foil on the top and one on the bottom. And in my hastiness, I forgot to take the one on the bottom off. So when I pressed it, of course it didn't stick to the sleeve, it came right off. It actually pressed itself on the lower foil. However, I quickly reverse pressed it then. So to get it all flat again, and then I tried to slowly extract the patch from it. It actually worked. I could get the entire patch here of the foil. I didn't have a cover foil then anymore and a bottom foil any, a, again. So I put this onto the shirt, pressed it, it worked out. But I was close to desperation on that one. So yeah, those are the fun adventures. <laughs> Always look at every patch if you need to remove one side, because otherwise you're in trouble. Sorry, the second time it's happened to me, both times I could figure it out. Any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video and thought it is helpful. I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!